Hello, I want to thank you for watching and supporting this channel. I spent most of 2019 traveling. I'm now living on a sailboat in California. Now what I've done is I've actually made a small studio on the boat so I can actually continue this production. Okay, in this video I want to talk to you about the complex exponential. Now you're already familiar with exponential functions. Uh, for example, y is equal to, let us say, a e to the t, okay? Now, this is really a real exponential function. Um, a, of course, is amplitude, and e over here, that is referred to as Euler's number. And look, that has a value, e being equal to 2.718. Uh, 2, 8, and this just goes on, okay? We can plot this, and if we were to do that, we have our y-axis, we have our time axis over here, and plotting, we see our exponential function. What we want to do, though, is we want to actually replace this exponent here of t, we want to replace that with a complex number. So we're going to rewrite this, and we're going to say it this is y equals a e. Instead of t, we're going to put a complex number there, which is j omega t. Now this is, this is the complex exponential. Now of course here, j would be equal to what? The square root of minus one. And of course, omega is really uh, the angular frequency, which is equal to two pi f where f is frequency in hertz. All right, now let's see what we can do with this. Now let's consider, well, what does this actually look like? So look, let's consider actually plotting this. All right, so what we need to do is really convert this really into its real and imaginary components. So really to do this, what we're going to do is use Euler's formula. Okay. All right. This formula looks like the following. It is E J theta is equal to cosine theta plus J sine theta. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this information into our complex exponential function up here. All right, let's do it. So what we have is then that y is equal to a, there's the a, and this part is replaced with this. And so what that would be is cosine omega t plus j sine omega t. All right. And of course, if we expand that out, we've got a cosine omega t plus j a sine omega t. Now, let me show you what we can do with this. I'm going to show you this really graphically. The real component is a cosine function. And the imaginary component is a sinusoid. Okay, so now let's look at um, plotting this complex exponential on a polar plane. So y is equal to a e to the j omega t, all right? A polar plane will consist basically of an imaginary axis and a real axis, like so. Okay, now, what we're doing then is we're plotting this function on this polar plane, and this will look like a vector. So let's look at an instant in time. There is that vector. Okay, now as we increase time, this vector will rotate, and it rotates producing a circle. So as time increases, the vector simply rotates around in this circle. Now what we can do is we could look at plotting. So let's draw 
our imaginary axis again over here as a function of time, t here. Let's draw our real axis over here. So this is our real axis, and here is time. So look, if we take that instant in time, what we could do then is go over to this graph here, and what we would see at that particular instant in time is a value for the imaginary component. Similarly, we can come down over here to the real axis, and again, at that same instant in time, we can plot the real component. Now, as this guy basically traverses around in this circular motion, what we end up producing over here is a sinusoid, and what we produce over here is really a cosine waveform. So look, I've got a little animation here that will show this. So let's, let's have a look at this. So you can see here that the imaginary component produces a sine wave. The real component produces a cosine wave. Okay, now let's look at deriving a formula for cosine. Okay, so we'll call this cosine theta. All right, now we know from Euler's rule that e to the j theta is simply equal to what? The cosine theta plus j sine theta. Okay, so e to the minus j theta would be equal to cosine theta minus j sine theta. All right, now let's think about this. What if we were to take this guy and add it to this guy over here? Let's do that. So if we have e to the j theta plus an e to the minus j theta, what do we get? Well, let's look at this. Okay, I'm gonna use brackets here to start with. All right, this is our first term here. Okay, so we've got what? Cosine theta plus j sine theta. Close the bracket. And I'm adding this term, this term. So let's put a plus bracket. What have we got? Cosine theta minus j sine theta. Okay, close the bracket. Now, let's have a look at this okay what happens here okay we're going to add these two terms well we've got a cosine here and we've got a cosine here so what we can say is e to the j theta plus an e to the minus j theta is equal to what cosine here cosine here that's what two cosine theta okay now we've got a plus j sine theta here and we've got a minus j sine theta over here. So what happens here? These two guys will do what? They'll simply uh, cancel each other out, okay? And so then what are we left with? We're left with this term here. So therefore, I could say, could I not, that really this cosine theta is equal to what? This e to the j theta uh, plus e to the minus j theta divided by two, okay? And so there we have it. We have cosine theta is equal to e to the j theta plus an e to the minus j theta divided by two, okay? Now let's do the same thing for sine theta, all right? All right, so now we want to do a similar thing to determine sine theta. That's our goal, all right? So what we'll do now is we're going to simply take um, e to the j theta, and we're going to actually now subtract e to the minus j theta, and we'll see what happens, okay? So let's do this. What we're going to do is substitute, substitute in this and this into here and here. All right, let's do it. Okay, so what we have is e to the j theta minus e to the minus j theta is going to be equal to, we've got bracket here, this is going to be cosine theta, plus a j sine theta, close the bracket, and we've got a minus sign now, and this would be open up the bracket, and we'll put this term in here, which is a cosine theta minus j sine theta, 
All right, that's where we are so far. Let's have a look at this. We're going to expand the bracket. So what we've got here is a cosine theta, haven't we? And over here, we've got a minus, haven't we? A minus a cosine. So the cosine bit goes. What are we left with then? Okay. Well, we've got over here um, a plus j sine theta minus a minus gives me another plus j sine theta. So what we get is e to the j theta minus e to the minus j theta is simply equal to 2j sine theta. So therefore, what can we say? We can now say that sine theta is going to be equal to e to the j theta minus e to the minus j theta divided by what? 2j. And so there we now have the expression for sine theta. Okay, very good. All right, next time we're going to consider the addition of cosine functions. So I'll see you then.